Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the automatic recode function in SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, when we are collecting data or if we're receiving data that's already been collected, the program that's used to record the data is a program like Microsoft Excel. And many times, variables, when they're entered into Excel, are left as strings. So when we want to run analyses in SPSS, we need to convert those strings to numbers. Because to run many of the analyses we would want to in SPSS, the variables have to be coded numerically. The automatic recode function can convert a variable that contains strings into a numerically coded variable. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, you can see they have a variable ID, an independent variable program, has three levels. You see 0, 1, and 2. And if I click the A1 icon up here, you can see the string value that's associated with each of these levels, individual, group, and treatment as usual. This is the correct way to enter the data into SPSS. This is what we want a variable to look like. And then you can see we have functioning, and this is measured at the continuous level. These are numbers. And then we have quality. And this variable, this contains strings. So if I move to the variable view here, you can see ID, program, functioning are all numeric but quality, the type is string. And if we look at the values for program, we can see how it's coded. Zero equals individual, one equals group, and two equals treatment as usual. And again, this is how we want it to look. So moving back to the data view, let's first apply the automatic recode function to a very straightforward situation. So you have a variable that contains all strings and as you can see there's 45 records here and there are no missing values. So if we go to transform and then automatic recode this is what the automatic recode dialog looks like by default. We can recode multiple variables at the same time uh, but in this case I'm just going to recode quality. So I'm going to move quality over to variable new name list box and we do need to provide a new name for the variable quality. It's going to create a new variable. So let's just call this R1 for recode 1. And it's important once you type in the new name you need to click add new name. You can see it changes all those question marks to R1. So the automatic recode function is going to take the variable quality and create a new variable that's recoded named R1. And you can see there's a few other options here. We can recode starting from the lowest value or the highest value. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it at lowest value. We can use the same recoding scheme for all variables. Of course, I'm just using one variable here, so we're not going to uh, check that off. And we can treat blank string values as user missing. And I'm not going to check this off now. We have no missing values, but I'll show you how to use this in a few moments. So we're ready for this recode. So we're going to click OK. And you can see it creates the new value for us. So agree, which is in, in this list of options, uh, alphabetically comes first. This is first. So agree is recoded to 1. Disagree, which is next alphabetically. Uh, to 2, and so on. So we have 1 through 6, and we have a new value, and of course the value label. So if we look back, we'll expand this out, we can see that it looks the same, but if I click A1, you can see the numeric values are here instead of the string values. And if I go to the variable view and look at R1, you can see instead of string, it's indicating numeric. And if I go to values, 1 equals agree, 2 equals disagree, and so on. 
So it automatically recoded this variable for us. Saved a lot of time uh, in this instance. So going back to data view, I'm going to create a new variable now, uh, transform, automatic recode. And for this new variable, I'm going to call this R2. And I'm going to click Add New Name. So now it's quality to recode 2. Except this time, I'm going to recode starting from highest value. To show you how this is different, click OK. And you can see now it starts with the strongly disagree string and then moves down to agree. So the opposite of what we had before, the opposite of the R1 variable. So you can see now strongly disagree has a new value 1, strongly agree has a new value of 2, and of course that's reflected here in R2. So again, this is going to look the same in terms of you're going to have the same values, but numerically the values are different. So you can see where a value was 1, now it's 6, where it was 2, now it's 5 and so on. So these are fairly straightforward examples, but what happens when we have missing values? This is where you need to be particularly careful when working with strings. So let's use the example let's delete uh, record 9 and strongly disagree. I'm going to delete that. So that's just going to be an empty cell. And I'm going to delete record 18. Somewhat disagree. So record 9 and record 18 are just empty cells now. So if I go into transform, automatic recode, I'm going to go back to lowest value here. I'm going to change this to recode 3 and add new name. But I'm not going to check off treat blank string values as user missing. I'm not going to check that off. I'm going to click OK. And you can see what it does here is the blank cell counts as a string. It's an actual value. It's assigned numeric value of 1. And agree is assigned numeric value of 2 and so on. So if I were to go in and run a quick analysis on recode 3, R3, even though you can see I had two missing values, if we go into say analyze, compare means, means, and I move just R3 over, just click OK. You can see that no cases are excluded. There are no missing values according to SPSS. It does not treat blank cells as missing. In order to have SPSS treat records 9 and 18 as missing values, I'm going to go to Transform, Automatic Recode, and where it says Quality to R3, down here, a new name, I'm going to change this to R4, recode 4, and add new name. Make sure that's changed up here. But this time, I'm going to treat the blank string values as user missing. And click OK. And what you'll notice here is that a new value is still assigned. So it recognizes the empty cell now is missing, but it assigns it a value of 7. So if we go back to the variable view for this variable R4, we can see under the missing column that the value specified is 7. And if you click the rectangle next to that, you can see discrete missing values, 7. So SPSS has coded R4 so that a value that comes in as 7 numeric value 7 will be recognized as a missing value. So, so if I were to run the same analysis as I did for R3, so I go to Analyze, Compare Means, then Means, and this time I'll move R4 over here to the dependent list and click OK. And we can see that it does recognize two missing values, the values coded as 7. So as you can see, the automatic recode function requires some attention to missing values. But overall, 
can save a tremendous amount of time when recoding a variable containing strings to a numerically coded variable. I hope you found this video on using the automatic recode function in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.